All right, it's voting day in Missouri. It's time to do my civic duty. 186 from the last count I saw. 186? Yeah. I have no idea what that means. Oh, 186 voters. Outstanding. Did my duty. Now I can go to work. All right, done. I don't mind telling you who I voted for. You know that I'm probably a Democratic voter anyway, based on the way that I talk about things. It's kind of awesome. Once you start to see blossoming and greening, like then you see it everywhere. It's it is so great. <laughs> I feel like a little kid about this stuff, but seriously, the day I notice the blooms and then the day I notice the buds is like the best day of the year because spring's here. It's the, the winter is over. Yay! So yeah, I voted. Great, simple. I mean, it's just the presidential ticket at this point. I mean, it's the primary, that's what it is. It's weird, I mean, I was in there for literally five minutes, tops, maybe. There wasn't even anybody in line. And you're probably wondering who I voted for, and that's fine and I have no problems telling you. I mean, if you don't know that I'm a Democratic voter, then you're clearly not paying attention. So I voted for- Hello! Hello! <laughs> What's up? I have a list for you. Oh my heavens. <laughs> she has a list. I do have a list. I love it when Lynn has a list. It's Exa an organized list, if nothing else. Organized list. <laughs> Let's get to it. Man, it feels good out here. This is our back porch. Um, you haven't seen it because it's been fall or winter since I started the vlog, but we have a back porch here at the office and I'm looking forward to uh, sitting out here and doing some work this year. Hey, quick shot, I've come to a realization. Um, there's some people up there. They're playing mini golf right there. If I were braver, I would climb up the rock wall, but I'm, I'm not. That feels weird. <laughs> I'm normally not put off by talking to a video camera in front of other people, but like I just have this sense like they're gonna just like, yeah, anyway. Can you hear the birdies? It's so great. Anyway, I've come to the realization over the last couple of weeks about something that I thought I would share because it was important. Um, I have never been in a working experience where I was not responsible for basically every single thing that happened. I've worked for small nonprofits, uh, churches, a small nonprofit where I basically had to do a lot of stuff. I, if I had a secretary, the secretary was part time at best, or I shared, you know, an office administrator with other people. I've I've never gotten the opportunity to have like multiple staff working under me like I do now. Here's what I came to realize: I have been inhibiting their work, their development, and the betterment of the Synod, our organization, because I have still been operating under the assumption that I basically had to do everything. In the last two weeks, I have let several aspects of our work go and given it to my staff, and they have done it better than I have. I learned this metaphor in watching the movie I think it was Steve Jobs, it's the one that has Michael Fassbender and Seth Rogen in it. And there's this one scene where uh, Seth Rogen, who plays Waz, is talking to Fassbender, who plays Jobs, and they're in, the or they're in an orchestra pit at the San Francisco Opera House, I think, and Waz is like just going at him. He's like, you know, what do you do? I, you know, I put together, I built the thing, and what do you do? And he's standing there in the midst of this orchestra pit, and Jobs says, I, I'm the conductor. You know, I play the orchestra, you play the violin, but I play the orchestra. That switch, I've always been a violinist, and that switch to not playing an instrument, but helping other people play their instruments well, that's been, that's been really hard for me. It's, uh, it's something that I've come to slowly, and I really feel like I've made a breakthrough in the last couple weeks. So I was excited about that, and it's clear that James and Lynn are being even more successful now that I've actually done that. Yeah, if you are, person who manages, supervises, 
and his responsibility for resourcing other people to do work. Like, take your hands off stuff. It, it actually is good. I mean, you gotta have competent people like what I do, but it's, it's a good thing. Oh, and I keep wanting to tell you who I'm voting for. I'm, I'm voting for... I had a nice morning worth of work. Got a few things cleared out, life is good. Heading downtown to meet with my friend Sally for lunch. So that will be nice. Uh, it occurs to me I didn't tell you who I voted for. I, I voted for, uh, oh, hold on. This boy from the suburbs always gets a little discombobulated by parking garages. I mean, like it doesn't screw me up or anything. I'm just saying I don't always consider it. That's all. So Sally's taking me to a place called Lulu's. Pretty excited about it. I've been. I don't have much excuse to be down here, so I don't get to eat a lot of the great food in Kansas City. So I'm pretty excited. I don't know if you know this about me, but there are basically three foods that I adore more than any others. Hot dogs, you know, right? That's the point of life to eat hot dogs. Barbecue, you know. By the way, I didn't say on yesterday's vlog, the barbecue was pretty good there at Pappy's. I mean, it's not Kansas City barbecue, but nothing is, and that's okay, and I can live with that. But the third thing uh, that I love just about more than anything else are noodles. I love noodles, particularly ramen. I'm a huge ramen fan, so I'm really looking forward to today's lunch. Oh, um, who I voted for. Yeah, I vote. Oh, wow, look at that. Huh. I wonder what that's all about. Huh. Oh man, I can smell the ginger and garlic. I'm really happy right now. Really happy. So I just found out that Sally's not coming. She had sent me an email yesterday. <laughs> so I guess I'm just having noodles by myself, which is fine. That's fine. I can do that. can and will affirm the goodness of Lulu's Thai noodle shop. That was, even though my friend Sally didn't come, that was well worth the drive down, I gotta say. I would do that again in a heartbeat. Here's the thing you're not prepared for when you live in the suburbs and you come to downtown. Everybody down here is beautiful. I mean, beautiful. It's, I mean, and it's so beautiful that I can't even get mad about it, right? Because normally, like, you'll see somebody and you'll be like, why can't I look that beautiful? But these people are so beautiful, all I can do is, like, just thank God that they were made and that I get to look at them. There was a couple of guys who just walked by and they were put together. I mean, hair in the right place. They had great looking spring sweaters on. I'm disheveled. I, I feel like a slob. That's it. I'm going home. I'm tired of this. back and since I you know didn't get a message because I didn't check my email maybe it's time to do that what do you say maybe it's time to check the email <laughs> Oh 
Okay, um, I've been being intentionally coy because I thought it was funny. You may not have thought it was funny, but I kind of thought it was funny. I want to tell you who I voted for, and I want to give you my reasonings for why I voted for this particular person. And here's the deal, I voted for Hillary Clinton for two reasons. Um, I like the idea of the fact that a man may not occupy the Oval Office. It's not, it's not quota, it's not affirmative action, it's not any of that kind of thing. It's that I've come to understand that when people have different life experiences than the life experience that I have had, um, they bring a different perspective, they bring a different set of questions, a different set of assumptions to that. I mean, take away the fact that I really liked pretty much everything that Barack Obama said, voted for him twice, stumped for him even. The fact that he's not a white guy was huge to me. His understanding and experience of life is something that I felt like the country desperately needed. And so for my first reason for voting for Hillary Clinton is exactly that. She is a woman. She comes to her work with a different set of assumptions, a different set of questions, a different set of understandings than, than I would, than, uh, than Bernie would, than Rubio or Cruz or the other Bush or Christie or everybody's coming with a different thing than Trump. She's gonna come to the work with a sense of assumptions that I think would be valuable. The second reason is because of my understanding of what leadership has evolved to be. Here, what, what I understand leadership is. When I was a young man, um, young man, when I was a young warthog, when I was a young warthog, I was fully convinced of the fact that as long as you had the right ideas, you know, wanted the right thing, other people would understand that and they would they would get on board with that. And so from from that sense of myself, which I still hold, I'm I'm actually kind of prone to agree with and and respond to Bernie Sanders. Nobody cares about your damn emails. Like I I like Bernie Sanders. I like I like the ideals of democratic socialism. I really do. Back in 08 I would have been just fine to have Hillary Clinton be our president, to be our Democratic nominee and to be our president because I think that she uh, understands what it means to be a leader. I don't know that Bernie can't get the job done, but I gotta admit I'm not, I'm not feeling the burn. I'm, I'm really not. I want to make sure that there is somebody who understands how to move through and get the job done done and I think that Hillary will get the job done if she is our president. I, I really do. I think that she will make concessions where concessions need and should be made. I think she understands what it means to be pragmatic. So that's who I voted for. I wasn't trying to be coy because I didn't want anybody to know. Yeah, I hope you voted today if you live in the, the states that are that are voting. Here's the deal. You gotta vote. You, you gotta vote. And it doesn't matter who you vote for as long as you don't vote for Donald Trump. <laughs> it does not matter who you vote for as long as you don't vote for Donald Trump. People turning out. They're hearing anecdotally about... Got the news going on my iPad. No Making some say. biscuits and gravy. It's the way election night works in the Wits of House. Ron, who would you vote for? If Johnny Plato wanted to be president, I would totally vote for him. I mean, like, who would make a better president Kid. than Johnny Plato? Literally anybody.